Hello everyone, as you've probably seen, I've been starting to post videos on AFK Journey, pretty much just going over some hero guides, and I really haven't gotten too much into the gameplay of it to really let you guys know what the game actually is. So at any rate, let's go into the game here, kind of show you what it's all about, and see how much it actually compares to Souls. So we're all familiar with Souls being the kind of main chapter, going through that, beating a board, and then kind of leveling up to the next one. This game's a little bit different where we can go and move around and pretty much find the enemies. We can walk right past them, but there is a limit of how far we can go. Just like Souls 2, you're going to come to a point where enemies are too strong for you, and you're going to have to either level up your gear, switch out some heroes, and so on. So this guy looks to be an angry bear. Seems to be pretty tough. If we go and click on the battle button for it, you'll see things look kind of similar. There's more tiles inside it, and you can actually see which heroes and enemies are going to be attacking each other. So the red marks there, those are going to be the enemies going for those heroes. If I move one out of the way, they all go for them. That hero's going to die pretty quick. So still pretty similar to Souls as far as your front row, your mid row, and the back. Like I said, there's a lot more there as far as rows in general. The big difference you're going to see on this, though, is the battling on it. You'll see here, we are actually moving around and doing the attacking, where with souls, you're going to be stationary, jump for your attack, and then go right back to your spot. You can also see there's a little bit of a storyline or a commentary in there, too. I kind of like it. I'm not really big on reading inside the game. I actually skip over a lot of the reading besides the animations. But you can see there, we just got our butt kicked because that enemy was too tough. What I do like is the game is going to give us some advice on what we should be doing in order to beat it, which, pretty straightforward, it's telling us to go over and level up our hero. Also, increase hero's power and claim our AFK rewards. Now, before we go and claim the AFK rewards, I just want to kind of show you one of the things as far as how the heroes are in the gear works. So if I go to this resonating hall, this is going to be where all our heroes are, and you can see the different tiers of level. This Cecilia, this kind of purple one here, that's the highest rarity I have right now at Mythic Plus. And kind of the same thing as you go and get your heroes stronger in stars, or in this situation, rarities, you're going to be going and unlocking new skills. One thing I do like about this, though, if we click on that, it's going to say Marksman, Physical, and Range. So there's no guessing on it there as far as, okay, what's magical damage, what's physical damage. It tells you, just... One of those little things that makes life so much easier. But as far as the gear, there's not going to be like a, you know, six pieces of gear for each hero. At least what I know so far inside the game. You can kind of see here, we have them based. There's six different classes instead of four different classes like we have in Souls. You see Tank, Warrior, Mage, Marksman, Rogue, and Support. So, I mean, I guess you could kind of look at it as we do in Souls. You know, if you looked at your tank as being Babu or Rochelle, and then your warrior being Kion, this is kind of similar. Same thing, Marksman, Milia, whereas the Rogue, Fleda. It kind of makes a little bit more sense. It's just categorized a little bit better. But as you can see here, we click on this, and those are my five heroes right there, and they're going to share all this gear. So pretty much these six pieces of gear are going to fit all five of those heroes. Now, I don't actually have any new pieces of gear to go and throw in here to get better gear, but I can forge it, which is just taking some materials and increasing the power level on it. Now, before I actually forget going into the world here, there is random NPCs and our players. There is items and gold and stuff that you can find collected around. And there is even um, like puzzles and stuff, too, that you can kind of do. They're not difficult, but they still are kind of fun to just spend a minute or two. So that's a waystone. We can teleport from one spot to another spot by just going and clicking on that and going and bam, we're there. Now, if I go and I skip enough heroes and I level up high enough, I can just go back to one of these enemies. I'm so overpowered. I can just hit the button at one shot. Some, I think if you're like 10 power level above the enemies, it's pretty much a guaranteed win. So that's a nice little feature. You're not wasting your time. But we also have the AFK progress down here. You can see I'm at level 403. This is kind of like where you get your daily rewards that have been just kind of storing up overnight. So we'll collect all of these. And you can see there we got some gear. So we'll go over, just throw that on real quick too. I'm going to open all these equipment chests. And we at least got one of them. So I don't think it's really going to make a difference. It was just kind of a duplicate there almost. But as far as leveling up the heroes there, you know, like we have Soul Link inside Souls. This one is called Resonance here. And instead of that 20 level gap, it's only 10 levels. So I can actually take Cecilia up here, which those every 10 levels there, it's going to be a lot more currency that's needed. But you'll see it here once I get to a point and I go to try to upgrade again. 
Hands of resonance must be within 10 levels of each other. So everybody should be pretty familiar with that. I just go and hold the button down here and get these other heroes leveled up. I always call her Cecilia for some reason, but it's Cecilia. But you can see we at least got her leveled up some more. Now, Cecilia is my main marksman that I'm building around this. I can't really think of any hero and souls that I can compare to because she's going to create a kind of a Dr. Jekyll type thing, I believe it is, that's going to launch on screen. It's just going to be an extra hero out there that's just doing a ton of damage, stunning people, and attacking. So don't think we have anything like that in Souls, but still, this is a pretty OP one, and this is one that I'm just building up. Now, heading back over to where I got my AFK rewards, this is going to be where we can kind of go and do an auto battle inside here if we need to. I kind of would consider this more of like the tower of souls inside a game and when i get to the point of you know being in that overall chapter area i was running around and collecting enemies there's going to come to a point where i want to move on to the next boundary but i can't actually go because i'm not meeting certain requirements and one of them usually is like be afk stage 450. they'll also want your resonance level and a couple other things in there but there is points in you know requirements that need to be met from playing the game before you can move on to, let's say the next chapter. We do have our daily hourglass that we can click here, give you 120 minutes worth. So that's something we typically see in games. But the other thing I want to show you is we have our heroes, we have our gear, we also have artifacts. And this is not like artifacts inside souls where they're independent for each hero. These are gonna be kind of like boosts we can go to give to the whole team. So this one here, the Star of Battle, attack speed of one rear most ally hero on the back increases from 80 to 15. The bonus attack speeds increase. And you can see our ones here, there's healing. Five seconds after battle starts, summon Radiant Light to restore three weakest allied heroes. So just kind of overall artifacts that's gonna affect the whole group or a portion of the group there. And I think this is a nice little feature to be able to just kind of switch these out when you're struggling on a chapter. If you zoom out, you can see that there's completion for finding enough stuff inside the area. So for example, here, Dark Forest, I'm at 93%. If I click on there and click up top on it, that's gonna show you, I need to go and I need to find some large chests, medium chests and small chests. And then we'll get those exploration journal rewards up top. And then we'll also get that area rewards. I can go down here and switch to the dark forest to see, okay, I need some small chests, medium chests and a large chest. And then I can finally have all that completed. The mythical house, this is gonna be kind of like where we can purchase things, our heroes, you know, pulling summons inside it. Where we only really have, you know, one summon or 10 summons inside souls. This is a little bit more like survivor.io, I guess I would say. So we have all hero recruitment, which is going to be kind of the basic. You can go and summon 10 of them, 2,700. And then there's the epic recruitment, which is going to give us a little bit better heroes there and give us some of those hard to find ones. But as you can see, there's also two other banners going on right now. One with a guaranteed epic at 40. And then the other one being this stargaze station where you can go and purchase some of the currencies in there to try to get the Scarleta here. So a lot more options to try to get your heroes and narrow them. Yes, it is going to go and cause different currencies and take a little bit more, but it gives you a little bit more variety. You can see this is also where we have our mail, where I can go and grab my arena rewards from playing for the day. We'll go in there in a second here and kind of show you all that stuff. But that Mystic Collection, that's just kind of like our, you know, what we've unlocked from our progress in the game so far. So reach resonance level 140 and you'll get rewards daily AFK essence earn plus five. So this kind of builds up over time just from playing the game. The Aporium itself, that's gonna be like your shop or, you know, we have our daily shop, the guild shop, the arena shop, all that stuff inside here. They call them stores on this game, but that's how we can kind of collect some of the stuff. There's one of those stargaze things right there, stellar crystal. So that's kind of how you get those ones for that special banner. As far as the battle modes inside the game, I guess the big one I would kind of make you most familiar with is this legend trial right here. I mean, I do this usually on Sundays. You can see where we have the ancestral tomb and we can play any one of those at once. This one is gonna be on specific days. So it's how you have Monday, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And this one obviously is today. But I usually just wait till Sunday and then just go and push through all four of them. And same thing as Ancestral Tomb there. You go with that specific style race or faction. This one is the Mauler faction right here. So we'll just go and pop that on. And you can see if we go and beat it, we're gonna get rewards after I think like every three levels or so. We might even actually get some after this, but I think I might be stuck around this point without pumping some levels in right now. 
The other thing too is where we have rounds inside souls. This one has a timer. If you don't beat it by the time the timer is up, you end up losing. Did get some rewards out of it. So you can see up there, we get three envelopes when we beat the next one. Those are gonna be what we use for the summons on it. So instead of actually having it like where every five, 10 levels or some more rewards on it, this one, you reach those benchmarks and get them that way. Now the dream realm, this is kind of what I would call the cave of abyss inside it here. You can see here, I can collect my rewards from the day before. And the big thing with this is we're gonna have it where every single day there's a different boss. You're not gonna be running into all three of them and it's gonna be random. You're gonna be able to actually go and decide, okay, this is the boss I'm going up against and we'll go in and attack here. And this is usually gonna be 89 seconds right now, 90 seconds, I guess you should say. And you can see the meter there. We're actually hurting this thing pretty good on it. So once we go and beat this here, we're gonna collect that rewards and then the next level of it's gonna come through. So we are on elite challenge right now. We'll see what it is when I beat it. So you can see here, we just killed the thing, 44 seconds left. So we were pretty strong and overpowered on it. Battle over. And you see, these are all the rewards we get down the bottom on it, or at least what I had left on it. We now have it where common two is now the difficulty on it. And I can go back in, fight it again, but now it's gonna be harder. So instead of having it where you got your level one chest, level two chest, level three chest, it's gonna depend how far that percentage is that you can complete on it. And then if you make it all the way to the end, then you're gonna unlock the next level. Out of all the game modes, this is probably my favorite one right here. I know I have other games like Survivor.io, I used to say I was all about the bosses, even Archro bosses, I'm always a boss guy and I feel like this is a lot of fun trying to destroy these things. I think we have seven tries every single day of going up against this. So it gives you a little bit of time to switch out heroes that are working and aren't working and see if you just get that percentage a little bit higher. The other thing I find too, is if I'm getting stuck on this and it's not working, I might go in and switch that artifact with a different one, keep the hero team the same and see how I perform with that. The arena, that's pretty straightforward on this. Big thing being different though, is we only have three players we can choose behind. I'm still a weakling inside this game, so I've just kind of been going against whatever the lowest one is, or at least make like 10K below me. But you can see, I can see their formation, they can see mine. Obviously, it's not a live player on this one. We're just playing the uh, computer on this, but it's whatever your stored defense is for that. We get four tries on it, and then we actually can go and purchase more with diamonds. The next one, the fifth time of playing it is actually zero diamonds to purchase. So technically you get five in a row, but from there it's only like 10, 20, and then 30. So they're really not that expensive to, to buy the currency inside it. If we do win enough, you can see here, we get victory rewards over on the side for each thing. And then obviously daily rewards that we'll be collecting in our mail the next day. On our duel, this one's kind of a fun one too. I haven't really played it this much because I am playing on my Android device, so I'm really kind of stuck on how often I can play. So I'm just kind of doing the things I really enjoy, but I did like playing this one here. So we can kind of go through here and select my initial combo. Um, I'm gonna go and play random and have fun. So we get some random heroes there, and then I can go and purchase the currency. So you see, we have three apples. That's our HP up there. We need to get nine wins from going in. After every single battle, we'll get currency and we can then go in and purchase some of this gear. So I wanna to try to go and get my heroes leveled up. That's just the way that I tend to play it. And let's see here. Well, we can refresh it too. So let me refresh it. I'm gonna to try to go and get this Graveborn here because that's kind of what I really like. Cessia, awesome, that's who I wanted. And now we're gonna find an actual live player to go up against. So the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna put three of my heroes out and at the same time, they're gonna put three of their heroes out. So we kind of have an idea of what we're going up against. So I usually like to save my stronger ones for last. So what I'm gonna do here is we'll throw you there and I can do one more on this. So we'll go and pop you right there. So I've just put my first formation out and now I'll go and throw my second one out here. So we'll get that and that. So we do get faction bonuses, just like we have inside souls there. You can see here four heroes. So the Graveborn is gonna do more damage to the light bear. Light bear is gonna do more damage to the maulers and maulers is gonna do more damage to the wilders where the wilders will do more damage to the Graveborn. There is also kind of their own form of light and dark heroes in here. I think there's only two of each right now. I do have one of them. It looks pretty cool, but it's not really a high rarity or a high level for me. So I got to kind of work that one up. So we just won that round right there. And let's see what we get for 
currency on our next one. So one win, we get 40 more tokens. And it's all about just kind of going and leveling yourself up, picking the heroes that work for you. And you can see here, I can actually go and grab Cecia right there, get her leveled. But as you can see, nine wins, and then we'll get some rewards inside the game. So that's another fun one too. It does take a little bit of time. So there is a lot to do inside this game, and that's not all. Arcane Labyrinth is one that I haven't really played a lot, but I did play it quite a bit when I first unlocked it. Like I said, lacking on the time of it there. But you can see, we're just kind of going to go, and each time we go and fight in battle, we're going to get a buff. We'll be able to get a selection to say, hey, let's increase our attack speed. Let's get another one for our attack speed. And pretty much just making yourself stronger, stronger as the game goes through. So we'll just grab some random heroes here, throw them out so I can show you. So we got a victory there on that one. And now you can see here, defeat enemies to get pure crystals, which can be used to purchase items at Fit Store or we can either get a resurrection potion. So nothing to actually upgrade the stats on it, but I'm gonna go and grab the resurrection one here and we'll just do one more battle again so I can kind of show you what the stats look like. So as you see up top, difficulty three, this is 15 stages of going through. So as you can see, we already have one of two of this relic gate, so increase HP by 10%. Or I can go for the other one, which is the Vanquish, which is going to increase our attack by 5%. So I'm just going to go this one here, which will increase that up to the second level on it. So as I go through and defeat that battle now, now I've unlocked that reward I was just going for. And now I have a selection here. We can enemy heroes under crowd control lose 1% of their HP every second. So I'm probably going to go for that one, given that my Cessia there is going to bring out that Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Jekyll and then go and pretty much stun them or entangle them. So that's kind of a nice one right there. Plus it's an elite, which means it's going to be better than the rares. Not always the case, but in this situation, I think it is. We can go over to Fitz's store here, and this is where we can use some of the currencies inside to go and purchase some of the things. So restore at 10% HP, resurrection potion. So you guys kind of get the idea. And then at 15, we kind of get some more rewards out of it. So you can see that there is more slots out there, but we do have battle drills. This is kind of like a guild wide thing right here of, you know, we're all going and fighting to kind of beat a boss. So there it is. You kind of go through, select what your buffs are going to be. And then your each hero will have a certain amount of stamina. You decide which teams you want to base by the stamina and then go in and battle. And they give you options for easy, medium and hard. So if you are a lesser powered player inside the game, it's kind of a way like, hey, you take the easy stuff. The guy that's been playing is level 240. He can take the harder stuff. And obviously, like everything else in the game, there's rewards to be grabbed from it. So they already have friends inside the game, send and receive every day on that. There is daily quests, just like everything else that we would normally see. Uh, guild quest too, growth trials. So there's a lot of stuff to get rewards in it. So it's, it almost feels like this game has been out for a while with how much stuff they have added in it. So it's definitely when this thing pops and goes right into global, which is gonna be March 27th, there's a lot of stuff you can do to just keep yourself occupied on the game. Don't get me wrong, I was able to grind souls nonstop there and just kept on climbing, but this is still the same case with this. There's a lot to learn in this. A lot of the heroes and their skill sets are a lot more complex than what we're used to seeing in souls. So, I mean, they do give you kind of a basic form of it here. If I do the light right here, Seth flashes towards an enemy and deals multiple attacks. Sounds pretty basic and easy. That's all you really need to know. But if you click on this here, you can see Seth flashes towards an enemy, dealing 100% of his damage three times, then freezes them briefly and jumps to deal 150% of his base damage, more damage to the target, and then becomes invincible. It recovers HP. So, I mean, there's a lot more in there than just Seth flashes towards an enemy and deals multiple attacks. So if you really want to know about it, there's a lot to learn inside it. There is a lot more stuff on this game altogether though, but I just kind of want to give everybody a brief of what I'm seeing in here right now and make you a little bit familiar with it. So you're not just seeing the guides and going like, okay, that's the guy's skill sets. I know they are dry videos, but because the game isn't out yet right now, I don't want to go and just, you know, pump all the things and then, you know, have nobody watch it for two weeks because the game isn't out yet. So as the game gets closer, we'll make more detailed guides and kind of give you a little bit better idea of what you need to do inside the game. But if you guys just can't wait and you want to watch one of those a little bit more on the dry side videos, take a look at this one right here. Thanks for watching and remember, I pick my butt.